Hello friends, in this video I would like to talk about one of the most essential tools of every creative person and that is a commonplace notebook. I've been keeping a commonplace notebook for the past 15 years of my life and it is one of the most important and most creative daily habits that I've maintained over those years. When I just started a decade and a half ago, my journey wasn't smooth at all in the beginning and I've made a lot of mistakes. My first notebooks were very disorganized, very chaotic. I even thought of quitting at some point. So I decided to make this video and share with you a couple of tips so you can avoid making those mistakes in the beginning of your journey as well. The first thing that I would like to draw your attention to is what notebook you should choose to use, how you should buy notebooks, what you should look out for. And there are two crucial things that you should pay attention to when you are about to buy a notebook. The first is the quality of the binding of, uh, of the notebook that you are holding in your hands. This notebook is a standard soft cover moleskin notebook and it usually lasts me around 9 to 12 months. It usually takes me that amount of time to complete it and you are going to carry this everywhere, wherever you go, wherever you um, are going to uh, use this. And it's going to be in your backpack. It's going to get really worn out. And if the notebook is of a bad quality, it is quite likely that you are going to lose some of the pages. So pay attention to how durable is the cover of this uh, of the notebook that you are about to buy. Moleskin notebooks are quite good at this. But there is another, the second thing that is so crucial is the type of paper or the quality of the paper. The, its thinness and thickness are really important, particularly to people who like to take notes using fountain pens like this. This is a really beautiful fountain pen by Lamy. And Unfortunately, Moleskine notebooks decided to downgrade the quality of their paper. So now when you use a fountain pen with Moleskine notebooks, the ink bleeds through the pages and it really gets messy and chaotic and it's not a pleasant experience at all. It is for this reason that recently I switched to this brand of notebooks, which is a German brand called Leuchtturm 1917. I hope my German viewers are not going to uh, criticize me a lot for my pronunciation, but as far as I know, it translates as a lighthouse. And this notebook is of a very good quality. It is a really good quality of paper. It is slightly more expensive than a moleskin notebook, but it's really worth the price. And we are gonna come back to this notebook slightly later in the video. So these are two things that you should watch out, the quality of the binding and the quality of the paper. Now I would like to move on and tell you kind of a little bit about the mindset that you should approach uh, your common uh, place book with. And that is a mindset that I borrowed from this wonderful book about uh, the English poet John Donne, who is an incredible poet. And this is the, his biography written by Catherine Rondell. And John Donne was one of the first adopters of commonplace notebooks. He was using it to write his poetry. And essentially there are two tips that he can offer you. And that is that you should approach it with dual mindset of a um, lawyer and of a treasure hunter. You should collect notes as lawyer collects evidence to build up for his case. It, every note should be really thought through and really important so you could use it in your future creative projects. The other side is of a treasure hunter. You should have the mindset and attention of a treasure hunter who is really wants to find gold. But your goal in this case are passages that you find in books. Keep this mindset of keeping and looking out for the treasures that every book or every article uh, contains so you can put it in your notebook. So these are two types of mindset and what could be the worst thing that could happen both to a lawyer and to a treasure hunter? And that is being disorganized, being so chaotic that you turn up to court and you cannot find how you organized your 
evidence, you know, or evidence that you collected over the months. Can you imagine the disaster a lawyer would have if he experienced that at court? And uh, of course, like for a treasure hunter, imagine a treasure hunter using a map that is so badly drawn, so badly organized and made that he cannot even find the gold, you know, you cannot find where the gold is buried. So for this reason, you have to be organized. And here we are going to talk about how you can organize your notes. This is a mistake that I've made and I really wish somebody told me this technique uh, went back 15 years ago. I'm going to use this book as an example. So the first thing that you should pay attention to, it is the format. You are going to put, take notes from multiple sources, from books, articles, films, YouTube videos. So the first thing that I put is the type of format. So here we have a book, then the title of this book that you that we have here. So I put here super infinite. And then the third variable here is John Donne. It's not Catherine Rundle who is the author of this book, but it is the key figure. All the facts that uh, I'm going to write here are revolving not around her, but around him and her everything that she tells about him. In this case, we have books, title, and also the name of the key character, who is John Donne. It could also be Florence, like a city, you know, it doesn't have to be a person. It should be the key subject that your notes are about, or that the book is about. And we're going to come back and talk about the fourth variable that I've put here. The second important thing here is to start your notes and divide it by chapter. There has to be this element because every author divides their book by chapters because it is like a complete thought, a complete thing that they tried to articulate. So it's important to utilize what uh, authors also did. So in this case, I have a chapter two here and there is an incredibly interesting fact on the page 59 of this book. Catherine Rundell tells us that the very first person who invented commonplace notebooks was a, a Dutch scholar whose name was Erasmus of Rotterdam. He was the first person who said that every creative person, every intellectual needs to keep a notebook like this, where they can collect interesting facts, interesting quotes that they can use in their future projects. So this is why I put here for the sake of this video, I decided to keep it short. I would usually elaborate more, but Another interesting fact that Catherine Rundle mentions is on the page 50, uh, 61, and that is that in the 15th century England, you could buy ready-made commonplace notebooks that you could use. They were created by someone else, somebody else assembled quotes, facts around the subjects such as um, astronomy, poetry, theology, you name it. And you could buy those notebooks and use those notes in your creative process. I thought that that is a really interesting fact. So if you will keep the notes like this, our, the, everything will stay incredibly organized. Let's imagine that every note that I've taken here is connected with the subject of commonplace notebooks. Here in the corner, I've added, as you might see, commonplace notebook. So in the future, when I'm gonna flip through those pages and try to find the relevant material, first thing that I'm going to see is the key subject, key notes, and then other elements that you notice here. This is super helpful for navigation. It will really help you. Next thing that I would like to talk about is how you should continue keeping your notes. So let's imagine that you get bored of reading this book, you are reading this wonderful book, but it gets boring, let's imagine, and how you should uh, continue and keep the notes if you started reading something else or got distracted, how you should do it. Usually people take 15 pages, they reserve 15 pages, so when they could will come back to reading this book and continue reading this book, they would have enough pages to fill it fill it up. And this is the very wrong, this is like incorrect approach. The best way you can do is just, let's imagine that I decided to um, read a little bit about Hieronymus Bosch, and this wonderful and a bit gloomy, scary painter. What I would do, I would just 
open the next page and I use the same thing. I'll add book here, Hieronymus Bosch, the category of art, and then I'll add notes, let's say page 40, something else, something else. And I'll continue with this. If I come back to John Don, I'll put the notes here and continue. So I, I will flip and uh, just have this continuity of taking notes. And of course, the difficulty here is how do you navigate when you, this a notebook gets like a collection of 50 different books or 30 different books? It is really difficult to navigate once you start to fill the notebook like this. The good thing about um, Leuchtturm notebooks that I've mentioned before is that they have table of contents in the beginning. So table of contents is going to be very essential for your commonplace notebook. This is going to be your macro level of navigation. So you have pages here, the titles here that I have. This is my notebook that is where I take notes for my novel that I'm writing, which is not going smoothly, unfortunately. But if you've bought a Moleskine notebook that doesn't have um, a table of contents section, you, you can just flip your notebook and at the back of the page you can create your own table of contents. I just usually write TC table of contents and I put the number of the page and the very first note that I've taken about the book. So let's imagine that uh, the on the page 55 of this notebook I started um, taking notes about this book by Catherine Rundle. You know, in the future, it will be really easy for me to navigate because I can just open table of contents like we do in books and find the relevant book, the very first note that I've taken and take it from there. So this is really uh, the most essential, the most basic level that I wanted to talk about. One last thing, couple of things that if you would like to spice up your commonplace notebooks, one of the things that I started doing after several years, I started naming my notebooks. Um, I named my notebooks depending on the season of my life, you know, a season of life that I've experienced. So this is a notebook back from 2015. It's my number seven, notebook number seven. And back then I was really obsessed by this German author, Hermann Hesse. And Hermann Hesse used to write about Bildung, Bildungsroman. His, uh, his novels were described as Bildungsromans, which were like novels about character becoming and transforming. And I was feeling back in that time that I was going through um, transformation and I decided to name my notebook like this. Another essential thing once you'll start keeping a commonplace notebooks, it is you can number them. It's important to number them. So this one is number seven. You can um, leave a date, you know, when you started this notebook. That would be really helpful, really useful. I don't know if I did it here. Oops, I've got lots of notes here. And um, so, yeah, like it, everything that will help you to navigate, everything that will create this map of treasures that you can use. So I hope you enjoyed my hand acting. <laughs> this is the first time I did anything like this. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this those tips will be really helpful to you. And if there are any questions, leave a comment down below. I'll leave links to um, this notebook. This notebook may be like something to get you started, but essentially any notebook will work as long as it has a durable um, binding and a good quality of paper. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.